Hey, this is Pastor Gary for another Wednesday Word. I hope this uh, finds you doing well. Um, you know, my uh, I'm going to be honest, my, my heart is, is heavy and it's been burdened for some time now. And, you know, I, there's always things going on, right? And, 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 and I get that. And, you know, but you just sometimes just get so down and you see, you see things and you hear things and, you know, it's, and it's not one particular topic, you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it's people on one side or the other with the vaccine, people on one side or the other with, with the mask, people on one side or the other with regards to, um, you know, what's going on at the border and our politics and, 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 and just who we are as a, as a, as a, as a country and a nation and as a world. And it's so divided. And I just think, and I, and I often just reflect and, and ask like, Where's the compassion? Where's the love? Uh, where's the love that we should have for each other? You know, and I believe that once we understand how much God loves us, how can we not be moved to love others and to lift up every life that God has created? You know, and, and that is, it's so hard for me to understand. You know, I, I was having a conversation with somebody and and, you know, we got to the topic about masks or, or vaccines or something. And, you know, I shared my views. I said, but, you know, the bottom line is, how can I show love to somebody? If loving somebody means that I'm sacrificing something that I, uh, my belief, other than my belief in God, you know, if, if I wear a mask or don't wear a mask, you know, if, if showing love means me wearing a mask for somebody, then I'm going to do that because it shows love. If, you know, speaking a nice word to somebody, if, if, if smiling to, at somebody, if, if lifting them up in prayer shows love, then I'm going to do that. If it means spending five extra minutes on the phone with somebody, if it means, you know, me, you know, in a hurry to do something, but that person needs to talk to me. And, and if I can show love that way, then I'm going to do that. You know, and, and that's a burden is that so many times we get so stuck on what our own perception is, our own opinions, that that's our truth and that's all we're sticking to it. And, and, and regardless of what it makes other people feel or how it makes other people feel, I'm going to stick to what I know and what I believe. But how do we show love? How do we show God, God's love that way? So I just, uh, I pray that you find, um, you just find wisdom in what we're going to talk about tonight, because I tell you what, I found wisdom in it, and uh, and and so we'll we'll get to the verse, the the chapter and verse that we're going to get to tonight. But let's pray, Father God. We just we thank you, Father, for loving us, Father, for loving us so much that you sent your Son down, Father, to pay for our sins, Father. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. I pray that you just open our ears, Father, to hear the message, Father, to hear what you have to speak to us about tonight, Father. Father, we thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I would ask that you open your Bibles to 1 John 4, 1 John 4, uh, verses 7 through 12. Now, for those that were in Lyft, I know we just went through the, the first, second, third John and Jude Bible study, um, and so hopefully... You were able to glean what I was able to glean from it, but I really just want to spend some time in in in, in God's word here in First John, uh, chapter four, verses seven through twelve. Now, before we read this, keep in mind that John is known as as the apostle the apostle of love. He was writing to a group of believers who were dealing with controversy and struggling with the temptation of to compromise a lot like today. Um, and, and so, let's start with verse seven. And in verse 7, uh, this is God's word. It says, uh, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this, the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one else 
has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. The word love is used 13 times in just six verses. The command to love one another is stated three times over the same verses. We're challenged with three love issues, love lessons in this passage. First, love has been defined. John commands us to love one another. This type of love can only come from God. For us to truly love one another, we must recognize that love is not so much an emotion, but an emulation of the one who first loved us. It, is, it has nothing to do with self-fulfillment. It has everything to do with self-sacrifice. We are called to continually love, continuously love. Love is not a feeling or, or a one-time action, but a lifelong commitment. Verse 8 goes on to say, The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. You see, just as love is an indication of a transformed life, the, a lack of love is, is evidence of an unredeemed life. An habitual lack of love for others may supply incriminating evidence that a person has yet to be saved, has not been born again. Essentially, if you if love is not reigning in your heart, God may not be Lord over your life. The second lesson is that love has been displayed. When it comes to loving one another, love has not only been defined for us, but also has been displayed. Let's look at verse 8. Or verse 9, I'm sorry. Verse 9 says, By this the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. God, Because God is love, God made his love obvious when he sent his Son. Jesus came so that we can have life and so that we can understand love. His Lordship leads to love, which leads to life. God's love for us was put on open display for all to see. Not when we were not when we were deserving of it, but when we were in direct opposition of him. He cho he chose to love us. Romans 5:8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, verse 10 clarifies that God's love can only be understood as we learn to comprehend what Christ did on the cross. It says, in this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of, for our sins. When we sinned, our relationship with God was broken. And this goes all the way back to Adam. But what Jesus did on the cross was a sacrifice. It was an expression of, pen, uh, uh, of to pay the penance designed to restore that lost relationship. Jesus, by his life and death, made it possible for us to enter in a, into a new relationship of peace and friendship with God. He bridged the divide between us and God. It's at the cross where God revealed his love, and it makes it possible for us to be saved by faith. The third lesson is that love must be demonstrated. Let's look at verse 11. In verse 11, it says, Beloved, and that's all of us, brothers and sisters, the beloved. If God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. See, John links God's love for us to our love for others. Since God poured his love on us, how can we not love others? who are just as unworthy as we are. That little word ought is very interesting. It means to be under moral obligation, to owe something or someone. We can't pick and choose whom we're going to love or when we're going to show that love. We're under orders to love everyone at all times and in every way. 1 John 4.12 reminds us that no one has seen God at any time God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. God is made evident when we love one another. It is by love that God is known. Although we cannot see God, what we can see is his effect. 
Just the same way we can't see wind, but we can see the effects of wind. We can't see electricity, but we can see the effects that electricity produces and what it what it does. The effect of God is love. God is known by his effect on us and when we love one another. Love has been defined. It has been displayed. And now we must demonstrate it by loving one another. Now, someone might ask, do we really need to demonstrate love to everyone? Define everyone. Well, let's go to Luke 10. That's where we, we, re, we read about how a lawyer once asked Jesus how he could have eternal life. Jesus turned and asked him to summarize what was written in the law of God. So the lawyer, you know, hey, full chest and everything, he said, you know, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Now, Jesus applauded his answer, but then in verse 30 tells us that the man wanted to justify himself by searching for a, you know, a, a, almost a, like a love loophole, right? He, he asked this, he said, and who is my neighbor? Now, let's be honest. Many of us have asked the same question. Many of us have seen that person in need and looked the other way. We want to know whom we're supposed to love and who we're not. You know, who's in, who's out. In his reply, Jesus told the story about the Good Samaritan. His answer really shows that the man had asked the wrong question. You know, the right question is found in verse 36. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? Well, let's go back to verse to, to 1 John 4. This is where we can find our answer. God has defined love and displayed it. But you and I must now demonstrate the love in our daily with our in our daily interactions with others. What exactly was the failure of the priest and the Levite? They found the love loophole and they took it. They rec you know, they failed to recognize a neighbor. They didn't see uh, this beaten down half dead man as their neighbor. They thought or they refused to see that he was somebody in need. That when he's when, when when you go back to what the lawyer repeated when he talks about and your neighbor as yourself, that he wasn't talking about those that live next to you as far as proximity, or the, those that are in your circle, or those that are like minded. It's your neighbor is meaning everyone. Listen carefully to these words. They failed to hear a human life calling them, a person in need, a person to love. See, the Good Samaritan, uh, he didn't ask, who is my neighbor? Instead, he asked, how can I be a neighbor? How can I be a neighbor to that person in need? How can I be a neighbor and show love to somebody? This parable teaches us that our neighbor is anyone who is a victim. Anyone in need or in pain or without protection is my neighbor. And I'm a neighbor when I act out of love for the sake of the one who cannot speak for himself or herself. We're not called to define who our neighbors are, but to be neighbors by demonstrating unconditional and sacrificial love to everyone, especially to those in need. This has obvious applications to, to so many of today's issues. Abortion, the border crisis, politics, race. We are so divided over things. We allow our political views, views on the vaccine. You know, one year in, we're still dealing with the mask mandate. I mean, now we have new words and phrases like, you know, vaccine shaming and mask shaming. We let our views on these issues interfere with what we are all called to do. Let me read. This to you from 1 John 4, 19 through 21. It says, we love because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have found, and this commandment we have from him that the one who loves God should love his brother also. 
if we are Christians, if we call ourselves Christians, if we say we love God, how can we say we hate certain people? How can we say that we don't care about other people? How can we say that we love God if we don't love everyone? Life is sacred because God is the author of life. Genesis 127 says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. He didn't create us, you know, certain ways or, or just to love those that are, you know, that are your neighbors. We are to love everyone because God created us all. That's who we're supposed to love. Everyone that God created. Even if somebody wronged us, even if somebody hurt us, we're to love them. We show them we show them God when we show them love. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this reminder, Father, that we are called to love everyone, Father, and not pick and choose, Father. It's easy to love the ones that, that are like us, Father. It's easy to love the ones that, that we go to church with or that are our neighbors or, or we share the same values with, Father. Father, but we are called to love everyone just as your word says, Father. Father, your love is perfected in us when we love people, Father. Father, we thank you for this message, Father. Thank you for all that you do, Father. Give us each an opportunity to show people you. Give us an opportunity to love someone this week, Father. We thank you and praise you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen. Well, first, uh, regarding announcements, I want to thank everyone. A special thank you for all who volunteered with our Easter services. I know that uh, just thank you for your time and dedication and service uh, to the Lord and for helping out with those four services. It was a great time. And the Lord, uh, you know, so many people were blessed by by your you just being available and, and serving in the capacity that you did from nursery to children's to ushers to greeters, security, uh, the the um, salt team, the, the worship team, you know, those that invited people to church, just everyone. Thank you so much just for being a part of, of Easter Sunday and, 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 and just serving the, the kingdom. Uh, don't forget our Mother's Day, May 9th. Be sure to invite your mothers. We're having the photo booth, more information to come regarding that. Uh, we have our spring ladies event this Saturday. We have uh, a springs, our spring campus men's event on the 24th. So spring campus ladies event this Saturday, the 17th. Uh, spring campus men's event next Saturday on the 24th. Go to our website, bfchurch.com for more information. Also be praying for uh, uh, something we're going to be doing tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, uh, April 14th. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be taking a couple of guys from the spring campus and uh, God has blessed us with our clothing pantry. And we're going to be taking clothes down to the uh, migrant ch children's facility uh, that they have in Houston. We're not going to the actual facility, but we're going to be going to one of the um, um, ministries that is helping out with that. Uh, you know, we're not asking questions. Uh, we're not asking political views. We're just asking for prayer. Um, you know, we have, God has blessed us to bless our community and to love our brothers and sisters. How can we say we don't we we love God again if we don't love people? You know, it, it's not these these children are where they are. Whatever decision was made was made, but these kids are there, and, and so we have an abundance of clothes that we can can give. God has blessed us and continues to bless this mini, this ministry, and so we're going to take some clothes down there and be a blessing to those children. It's not, again, it's not a political move. It's, it's, it's for the kingdom. Amen. And so I ask that you pray. Pray for protection and pray that whoever receives those clothes will be blessed by those clothes. Uh, with that being said, don't forget uh, church on Sunday. Can't wait to see you. Love you and God bless.